everyone. Welcome to the Key Opinion, a Doplexus series featuring eminent physicians in the medical field. Our guest of honor for today is Dr. Rinki Kapoor, who is the co-founder of Aesthetic Clinic and is one of the best dermatologists in India. Thank you so much, doctor, for this interview. Thanks. Uh, so moving on to the first question. Um, so Dr. Rinki, uh, you're the co-founder, as I mentioned, uh, for Aesthetic Clinic. So what got you started uh, in this path and how has been your journey so far? Okay, so the journey has been really good uh, as of now and uh, it all started when I did my MBBS. So after I finished my graduation in medicine, uh, I was thinking of, uh, you know, which subject to take up. So because I wasn't very clear, of course, I knew that I want to take up something which is non-surgical, but uh, I wasn't sure of which branch of medicine to go into. So then I consulted a couple of senior doctors in my community and they gave me their own advices. But most of them told me to get into dermatology. So that was very surprising because that was like about 20 years ago. And uh, I was like, because nobody used to take dermatology that time. It wasn't a very, uh, you know, upcoming branch or something like that. So I was a little skeptical, but then uh, I heard a lot of good things, you know, that uh, is going to have a very good scope later and uh, it's going to do really well. One of the most uh, topmost branches would be probably dermatology in another 20 years and that's what is happening now. And once I finished my uh, post-graduation in dermatology, uh, then, you know, by that time, there was some, uh, you know, you, you all must be knowing, you know, there was this Miss World and Miss mm -hmm. and all this thing coming up, Miss Universe and stuff yeah. with so many of our Indian ladies, uh, you know, getting top titles. And uh, then there used to be things like grooming and all that was gaining importance. Then uh, skin care started coming into vogue, you know, everybody suddenly started asking about how can I become like them. Yeah, I think it all started. Yeah, it all time. started probably from there, the 94s and 95s, that's when this began. And then uh, all of a sudden we could see that this is something which is really upcoming. We don't have too many uh, doctors catering to this as of now. I mean, there were of course beauticians, there were uh, people who were doing it. Uh, as as a parlor thing, you know, not so much as a professional uh, thing there that time. So there was a dearth of professionals who could, you know, actually manage it well with the right kind of knowledge. So there was no science into beauty at that time, probably. So that's what probably struck in my mind and uh, started working on it. Of course, there was a lot of this happening abroad. So like in the US and I mean, those the developed nations, there was a lot of uh, skincare and a lot of developments happening in cosmetology. So then uh, after my PG, I decided to go abroad, uh, study what is all this about and uh, bring it back here. So that's what I did. And uh, that's how the aesthetic clinics began. It actually began from Hyderabad. Uh, so I'm very thankful to Dr. Reddy, Pratap Reddy, who's the chairman of Apollo. And uh, he gave us a lot of encouragement at that time. You know, you must start a center. This is a very brilliant field and there's nobody around. So if you all are trained enough, you must start. So that's where I began. And then from there, there's no looking back now. Uh, you have won many awards such as the best dermatologist in Mumbai and also the top 10 cosmetologist in India and a many more. So could you throw some light on these achievements of yours? So this is probably uh, love my patience, <laughs> that's what I can say. And uh, it just grows, you know, so as you're working and people are happy, of course, see, I can't make everybody happy. So there must have been pitfalls. But then uh, I've tried to give my best to my patients and uh, they have uh, responded in a uh, in this manner probably because all these are things which happen on voting so a lot of my patients have uh, given good feedbacks and i've been recognized by my community so uh, that's why probably it's probably just good work <laughs> that's bringing me there all right okay. um so you've worked with your mentor dr rekha said and sharpened the skills required in management of all your clients so they are like all the elite clients and you know a lot of models from the entertainment industry so, um, and also I think international clients. Mm -hmm. So how has this experience shaped your career? Uh, yeah, it's been good throughout. So I can, what I can say is I was lucky to have uh, very good mentors, uh, not just national, but international as well. So I've like worked with some of the best in the field of lasers and cosmetic dermatology and got a lot to learn from them and try to implement them into my practice. Okay. Um, so doctor, you're a highly uh, skilled in non-surgical facial skin rejuvenation and also facelift techniques. So uh, would you like to elaborate on some of these techniques and uh, what, is there any specific reason that you're doing them? Yeah, 
See the skin basically is the largest organ of the body and probably has been neglected for so many years. Uh, we've never really taken care. Now, if you see my uh, the uh, elder generation, like our mothers and grandmothers, they used to do whatever they could at home, and they've tried to do the best for themselves. That was what was available to them. But nowadays, I mean, there's so much of technology. There's so many things. There's so much of knowledge. Not just in allopathy, probably, but in Ayurvedic as well, or in homeopathy as well. So there's a lot of uh, collaboration between these specialities, and we are trying to give the best that is possible to the patients. So now, in the field of rejuvenation specifically, there's been a lot happening in the last ten years. So we've had like so many types of lasers coming in. We have uh, the fractional carbon dioxide laser. We have the skin lightening laser. We have skin tightening uh, technologies like you got. You you used to have the radio frequency earlier of course it's still there but uh, we have more advanced technologies like ultrasound skin tightening so these are all non surgical uh, rejuvenation techniques we have botox botulinum toxin and fillers so these are all non surgical things which are used to you know give you skin rejuvenation makes you look younger and fresher and uh, so it's probably started moving from surgical towards non surgical uh because it's less invasive of course surgical is required where it is but uh, non surgical has gained a lot of importance and uh, we do get f- extremely good results i mean you can make somebody look 20 years younger then why not it builds up your confidence it improves your uh, uh, so many things you know your relationships and a lot of things go into this but uh, i think it's uh, available and we should avail of them so we've got like newer technologies coming every month practically so we go and we get trained and uh, we bring it back here there are some things which we do here and we try to uh, give it to the world so i'll be happy to say that uh, you know medical tourism in the field of aesthetics is just increasing by the day and we've got a lot of international clients and we're proud to manage them so it's not that we're treating only indian skin we're treating international skin as well and uh, we're doing a really good job so they come here as as well for tourism as well as for getting better um so like you mentioned that you know you're learning a lot new current uh, trends so if you could tell us a few um, you know what are the current trends right now and also the advancements uh, you know at yeah. this era like this yeah time. yeah so nowadays uh, of course it's always been there but nowadays there's more importance given because of media and so many things of course people are more aware they have a lot of spare income and uh, they're willing to spend they're willing to look better so why not so if you start from top to toe i think uh, if you take the hair so we have uh, of course everybody knows there are hair transplants there are so many things for hair but in the non surgical area we have something called as uh, and i'm proud to say this because it's coming from the aesthetic clinics so we have a united states patent on this which we got last year and it's a non surgical hair rejuvenation technique so we've got uh, these injections which uh, are injected into the scalp and a couple of sessions are required and it helps a lot of patients with hair loss you don't require surgery uh, in some patients so it's like uh, something which is not there world over and it's coming from india so that's a big thing and uh, we are treating patients from all over all across the globe for this so that's something that's going on in hair of course we have latest technologies in hair transplant like you have the fut fue you have uh, the dhi you have robotic hair transplants so that is for like severe cases you know where you cannot uh, get back the hair in any uh, with any treatment per se so there you have to go for these transplant things but we've got latest transplant wherein the scarring is minimum so there is uh, you will not understand whether the patient has had a transplant before so it's so much uh, you know advanced now then uh, facial of course your skin uh, there are so many things you have the latest uh, fillers coming in these are basically collagen and hyaluronic acid fillers which are injected to you know give back the youth to the face you can treat the under eye areas with them you can treat uh, sunken areas on the face you can treat scars with them of course you have the botulinum toxin which erases lines and wrinkles then you have lip fillers you can improve the shape of your lips uh all that you can improve the shape of the face then you can uh, make the face slimmer or you can make the face look uh plumper with these techniques you've got uh, non surgical face lifts which are called as thread techniques so you put in threads uh, under the skin and it's not visible on the surface it's a non surgical technique and it can you know just lift your skin uh and give you the tight effect and it lasts for quite some time so that's a non surgical face lift that's called then you have uh, technologies like the ultrasound face lift so that's a laser 
and uh, that is that probably needs just one to two sessions and it can give you a tighter skin you know so that's one of the latest that's available now in rejuvenation then you have uh, as you go down to the body you have body shaping and contouring and cellulite reduction and all that so you name it and it's there you have lasers for everything basically and technologies for everything so you can go for your uh, no nowadays you have this cryo lipolysis you have uh, cool sculpt techniques you know these are uh, fat freezing as it's called so it can freeze your fat and melt the fat away of course you need to select the patients properly i mean you cannot do it for everybody so the ones who need surgical liposuction definitely need a surgical surgical liposuction but then if you have uh, not too much of an issue and it's not too much of fat or the doctor needs to you know evaluate and see if it can be done non surgically you know you can really do it yeah so that is something where you need to work i mean you know so that adds a lot of confidence it adds your psychological your social social emotional well being is also uh, improving so it improves your physical quality of life as it's called you know your pqli index that's an index which is being studied now and uh, of course we are looking at giving that quality of life to our patients not just clinically so clinically of course of course you have a heart attack you need to get it uh, operated or you need uh, you you require a cardiac bypass you getting a scar there now it's a big keloid a uh, keloid is like thick scars and the patient is suffering with that he's got itching he's got it looks very unsightly he can't take off his shirt so all these things so they, that is where aesthetics comes in so we can remove the scars we can uh, reduce the scars significantly so that the life of the patient improves uh, there's a patient who has acne scars and uh, is generally in teenagers or it's there in younger generation the face is scarred severely scarred with acne what do you do i mean earlier it used to be just scar hai to it is there yeah. you know you can't do anything much about it but now you have lasers which can just erase the scars so why not i mean yeah. you know so that's a big value addition in all spheres of life physical social mental and uh, so i think uh, aesthetics is going to go a big way <laughs> Yeah. True. So you have been felicitated with the most valuable and admired cosmetic dermatologist in India and your continuous excellence has made Mumbai one of the leading destinations for cosmetic uh, dermatology. So um, according to you how can dermatology contribute towards improvement of healthcare system uh, in India especially? See dermatology if you say the subject is really huge so it doesn't involve just cosmetic it involves you know so many other problems related to the skin so you i mean initially there was a time in india where leprosy was a very big problem and uh, the doctors the dermatologists have worked in tandem with the government and a lot of things have happened they worked with ngos they worked with so many things and leprosy is almost out it's eradicated now that is there then you have so many other skin problems like you have vitiligo you have those white patches on the skin where it's probably is just a social stigma still you have patients with psoriasis it's a social stigma still i mean patients don't want to get out of the house if it's seen on the on the surface so these are things which are hardcore dermatology problems a lot is being done to create awareness a lot is being done to see what can be done there are social groups which are there which uh, help patients with uh, medications they help patients with counseling so and there are uh, campaigns which the national body of the dermatologists uh, is doing along with the government to bring down the stigma associated with these and to try to implement what treatments can be given or the latest treatments that can be given to patients so that is in general dermatology now if you see otherwise how it can help i mean if you see cosmetic dermatology as i said uh, the emotional social mental yeah. well-being of patients which is at stake is improving patients are feeling good about about themselves and uh, we are having a lot of inventions so we we probably uh, are one of the clinics in india who has a private clinics in india who have uh, an ethics committee that's coming up so we can conduct a lot of clinical trials for uh, initially it used to be just with pharma giants which is now which will be the facility with uh, even clinics like ours and we've got a robust uh system in place we can undergo clinical trials we can do research just like we've done the research on the hair molecule and we are really proud of it and uh, so we are not just clinicians we are uh, researchers as well and we are inventing new technologies to help our patients uh, we are doing a lot of work on indian skin because see of course the skin is different all over the world like we are not white skin so we have uh, the darker skin shades 
uh, the treatments which used to be done like i've gone abroad and studied but that's all on white skin all surgeries all lasers all treatments is on their skin we don't have any data on indian skin we never had i mean now there's a lot of thing coming up so we've brought the technology from there here we've done it on our patients on our countrymen and uh, generated a lot of data so if you see we've got a lot of publications on indian skin so that's where research is coming in that's where a lot of studies are coming in and uh, this is something which uh, you know our national bodies and uh, the individual doctors also in this speciality should aim at doing so you know how, like how we say like how much is too much for such you know in cosmetology so what do you think uh, about that and and i think especially when it comes to young generation uh, you know um, either in the industry like the entertainment industry or otherwise mm -hmm. i think these days they are really wanting to you know look good and you know want to do a lot of things to their face or the body mm -hmm. so how can you know in your opinion what is like too much see whatever you need as a part of requirement if it's a requirement and it's not harming your body it's fine as long as it's studied well and there is enough documentation on it that it is uh, safe to do it okay don't get into things which are risky that's what i would advise and uh, there's no limit i mean if somebody wants to go in for something like a filler to go for the lips you can go i mean there's no harm okay but if you end up with a lip necrosis after the filler then you have you have to be probably careful the next time uh, so you should be careful on that but uh, as long as you know what you're doing your physician knows what they are doing and they are not uh, trying to achieve something out of the world it should be okay okay but uh, you shouldn't you should listen to your elders you have a lot of young people coming in they just come without their parents knowledge they don't the parents don't know what's happening the guidance uh, the guardians and all don't know what's happening so that shouldn't happen tomorrow if something there's a risk or there's something that goes wrong then i mean there's nobody to blame except yourself okay and uh, the other way of looking at it is even the physicians who are doing it should do it with the proper consent explaining to the patients properly so they need to be sure on their end as well uh, as to what they are doing so there's a lot of responsibility on the physicians as well <laughs> true mm -hmm. okay um so dr lastly i would like to know um you know if from any message that you would like to give to the medical community uh okay so i think we are doing a great job and uh, india is uh, i mean i've seen a lot of patients who come in from abroad and they tell us that the healthcare system in india is really good and the doctors in india are really good i think probably it comes from our generations down that we care a lot for our patients for our relationships and uh, that thing should continue because we give a lot of time to our patients and we uh, are there to hold their hands so we i think we should be proud of that and we should continue that so the doctor patient relationship should always be strong so that you know um, we can take care of patients really well and uh, there's a lot of things happening in our specialty in cosmetics in aesthetics there's a lot of things happening and uh, we should carry it forwards so we should uh, you know uh, get into research we should try to invent things new not just treating patients and treating patients and that's it so we should try to contribute our knowledge to the community so add in a some some part of research and add in some part of uh, inventing new techniques and all that not just relying on uh, the west for that and uh, i think we'll do a great job <laughs> okay all right thank you so much it was a pleasure having you here thanks thanks